wonderful thing that the rain kind of slowed down while we all had to come here we are here to celebrate many things all connected to our favorite rd burman it's been 10 years to a film which was called pancha man mixed mujhe chalte jana hai and uh, really true to its name it's been traveling and traveling and traveling it has traveled to more than 40 film festivals so many countries so many houses so many people's hearts it has changed so many lives we know stories of people some people became musicians this film is also used as part of the music service uh, at a college in the us i think at babson ucla as part of the music ethnology uh, curriculum and uh, brahma ji our director he took this title so seriously that he also keeps on traveling Every time you call him, he's like in the U.S., in Canada, in Singapore, in Delhi, in Nagpur. So he also thinks we're just going to go, and we're just waiting for him to come back. But yes, this film, uh, when they shot it, they had about more than 400 hours of footage, more than that. Then the first time they cut it, they brought it down to 100. Then they brought it down to one and a half hours. So you can imagine the massive editing that has happened for this film. and uh, then they had so much extra footage so they said what do we do with all the conversations that were not shared with the public so after winning a national award we had knowing pancham which was 5 hours of extended conversation about r d barman we had a coffee table book and uh, pancham da i mean we have all been listening to him he is still contemporary apple which is an all american company used a track from the burning train which is a 1971 film and it is an rd barman track and then there are every year there is at least one film or two films which have an rd barman remix so how young is pancham da like all of us have favorite songs and almost 85% of those songs will be rd barman and uh, although i dare not compare you know, but the only person being an art lover that i can compare pancham da to is the artist vincent van gogh because uh, van gogh could find more colors on his palette than other artists and in the same way uh, rd barman seems to have found extra notes like where does he get that sound from or that tune from or that pitch from and he seems to hear what other people do not hear the normal ear hasn't you know caught it and he has caught it and he has brought it in his music and he also is such a sensitive person like we saw in the film that he feels more than other people feel and that is why this film was just not a biopic it was it was like a little insight or a window into this man and even after 10 years and pancham unmix and knowing pancham uh, brahma ji and the team of uh, mobius films realize that we can still seek more and they created something called the pancham legacy pancham legacy 
is going to be a series of extended conversations about Ardi Burman, about what we can learn from him, what we can understand from him, sometimes maybe the mistakes that he may have made, you know, in trusting people too much or not, you know, um, asking sometimes for work. He was so scared at some point. So there's so much that we have to still discover from the same person who stopped composing in 1994. And this web series is trying to do that. And a little glimpse of that web series is going to happen through conversations here on stage. So I'm going to invite our director, uh, Mr. Brahmanan Singh, to please come and to also invite all his friends here. Hello and welcome everyone and I feel uh, delighted more than anything else to uh, announce on this day something called the Pancham Legacy. I mean, I have not discovered it, it's already been there. The legacy has been around for a long time and I think that I am just trying to concretize it. Just like 10 years back, what I did was concretize things in the form of this film, Pancham Unmixed. Um, it was, at that point of time, being a huge uh, Panchamda fan, admirer, student, whatever you call, uh, it would trouble me that every 27th June and 4th of January, suddenly media would rise, news channels would have five minutes, seven minute capsules, saying Panchamda was genius, Panchamda was ahead of his times and things like that. and play a few clips and move out. So, what was this genius? Why was he ahead of his, of his times? There was no concerted attempt to understand that. And what I did in those three years of concrete work was uh, try and do that. I went through huge pains, huge troubles, but the way the film took off in 2008 is something that uh, I, I, I never expected. And 10 years later, we have crossed 400 uh, invited screenings. We, in the first couple of years, it did some 40 international festivals, all kinds of recognitions. And the best part was the way people have responded to the film. We have about 3,000 testimonials of what people have reached out to us and said how they feel about the film. Nobody says what they think. They always say what they feel about the film, most of them. And uh, that process continues, and uh, 10 years later, it still seems young. It's uh, become lessons for so many people. It, uh, it, it's, it's become a huge hit with corporate screenings somehow, because they can get huge lessons of leadership and innovation and experimentation and creativity and uh, uh, man management and emotional intelligence and whatnot. So, uh, so with all that, the journey, like she said, uh, knowing Pancham was an extension of the same thing about uh, four years back. And uh, now I thought that legacy can be a never-ending series. So let me just start it off. Though it has a lot of pains, you know, just to get it organized, shoot, edit, put it up. Sometimes thankless, sometimes very thankful because the way people come back to you. And like I was telling Chandra Mantra here that, you know, just if I just count on the number of people who have blessed me to make this film, I think that far supersedes any 200 crore film that you ever make, you know. And, uh, so it's it's a great uh, pleasure to have uh, some of the people here who were part of that 10 year back journey and I'd want them to one by one just come here for a little um, talk and session. Uh, to begin with, I'd start with Shantanu Moitro. He is one of the, other than one of the best composers of our times. Uh, uh, other than that, I consider him one of the finest scholars on uh, 
Salinda and Adi Verman, two at least, and um, maybe more. Whenever you speak to him about folk, about photography, he can, I mean, it's hours that pass by and you don't know where they have gone. So great to have you here and great to have you in the film. Uh, from that same lot, Leslie also, uh, Leslie please come. Uh, I had taken Leslie in that film for uh, a very specific reason. I needed a segment in the film which spoke about the continuation. And I thought that nobody better than Leslie because he was the first one to do the remix. First or second one, I think. Right, yes. And uh, much more than that, in fact, uh, which he'll, he'll, he'll tell you yourself best, that even before Panchamda had passed away, he had shared a lot of things with Leslie that he wanted to do his own remixes. And he said that, and you should do my remix and things like that. So that's again a huge honor. Hats off, Panchamda himself telling you. Uh, a lot of Shantanu's uh, understanding also comes from Guljar Sahib because he's very close to Guljar Sahib and Guljar Sahib is of course legendary there. A couple of other very good composers of the current era, Shamir Tandon, please come and join. And Sandesh Shandelia, again one of those silent composers who creates wonderful gems. So again, thank you very much for being here. And uh, I would like to invite a couple of more people here. One is uh, Vivek Vaswani. Can you join? Again, Vivek is a Pancham encyclopedia. You know, he'll tell you which year, which film release. You know, there are lots of people who have compiled books on Pancham Das, you know, who was the Vishwas Nerukar and people like that who um, you can go any film, any year. With Vivek around, you don't have to do that. Okay, you ask Vivek and he has his own journey. Uh, Nandini, uh, would you please come? Um, and uh, Nandini is one of the brightest singers that we have today. I, I had the fortune of uh, her singing in um, a film that I did recently, which uh, Sandesh composed. And uh, I would like to invite uh, Chaitanya Padukone. Now, Chaitanya needs a special introduction. The introduction is that he is, other than being a very, very veteran journalist, he is someone who was very close to Panchamda in his uh, last years. You know, in fact, for a long period, but those low, low phase of Panchamda, he would go sit, spend time, and you can understand when he had very little, few people to talk to, the kind of things that uh, Chaitanya is aware of, you know, is absolutely phenomenal. And uh, he's a music person himself, so he understands those things even musically, not just as a reporter and you know, information, something like that. I'd like to invite Shibani, uh, again a phenomenal singer. Yes, thank you. And come, so I think uh, we are expecting um, a few more people. If uh, they come, they will just join. But uh, I would like to, uh, I would like to unveil the the Pancham legacy thing a little later after we get a few things from them. I think uh, if we can just have them say a little bit, I know that they can talk for hours and they have so much to say that it will be impossible to even contain them. Vivek in particular, because Vivek, once he will start the kind of memories that he has, he will go, you know, into so many films and his, he has a personal connect with every one of them, like all of you for me, all of us. So, uh, in case anyone I'm missing from the uh, connected fraternity, yes, okay. But before we get into that, before there comes the star, come. Yes, Saru, come, join you. Yes. Uh, okay, I just uh, put them on here and right. Okay, okay, okay. 
So, before I ask Sonu to come here, I would like to invite and showcase my team here who has been behind this all. So, starting from Shivani. Uh, Shivani is on camera. Srishti, Suhana, Amar, Sanjay, Rakesh, and the captain of the lot, Tanvi Jain here. So I do very little work. All these people help me do so much with what they have to put together and say. So thank you very much for being here. So no, I just introduced uh, the 10 years of the film and uh, what all it has uh, managed to do in terms of people's hearts. Uh, rest we will uh, talk a little bit about uh, Yes, okay. Pachamda, uh, uh, very grateful if you can just join and then maybe we'll just. Uh, so I think just a quick round and then again uh, you can have uh, uh, after we reveal the, the uh, legacy thing, we can just have one on one outside or inside. But what's the plan? Outside. We can have it outside also. Okay. So I think so we'll get done in about. Uh, um, say about 10 minutes of each one talking a little bit and about 5-6 minutes of seeing the promo, okay? So, okay. So, Sonu, uh, please if you can join here. Yeah. Mm. Please, Sonu. Big congratulations to Brahma. With a name like that, of course, you know, he's conquered the world with this beautiful film. And I think uh, no performance of mine is uh, complete without doing a lovely set of all uh, Panchamda songs, uh, which is everlasting, evergreen, and uh, I think the best ever anywhere in the world. So I'll, I'll just say big congratulations and big hand for Brahma. So I think I'm the, um, one of the few people who have not met him. The work is out of question. So I'm like Eklav. I've watched him from far. I've understood and interacted with people who knew him. So my knowledge is that of a fan. And uh, but what I can tell you one thing is that uh, 10 years back when Brahmanan came to do this interview and film, he was as clueless as me. He was just taking a bite and wondering ki kuch hoga, kuch banega. I'm sure this was beyond his wildest dream where this incredible documentary has reached. And that is the biggest gift that Pancham has given him and to all of us. He says he's brought us together thanks to this film. Otherwise, we don't even meet. I think this is one of the great things that Party Bharat has done. And um, from my, from my personally, I can tell you one thing that um, every song is a struggle for a composer because of the composition, because of the way you have to sell it, uh, <laughs> approvals and all that. But I, sometimes when I think the kind of stuff that he has done, that he has pulled off, uh, it's also a, a big tribute to the people who are around him, all the directors and producers who allowed that kind of a genius composition to take place. I think it's a big, big... Uh, uh, how to say? It? It's an applause to that era, that time, who who recognized that genius and all, allowed that genius to perform. Uh, I'm very happy that Pancham is not here today because he would have been in trouble. Thank you. <laughs> well, hello everybody. Uh, all I can say is uh, I've been really lucky along my journey with Panchamda because. My dad, uh, P. and Raj, who has been a choreographer, so Shole, Sargam, Dawn, all those films. One day when I was maybe six or seven years old, he took me to meet S.D. Burman. So I was this kid and then, you know, senior Burman called out, Pancham, and then 
one guy walked in with glasses, the soda water bottle glasses. And I was the kid and my dad spoke. He introduced him to my dad and I was just the bystand guy. And that's the first time I saw him, met him. Years later, as I grew up and when I must have been like 9, 10, 11, I would go to his house when they were composing and I would sit with my dad and I was like that again offside guy. That, you know, but I was really recording, interested in recording. So they would be recording all the compositions as they were arranging, composing. So I was just really interested. And so of course he knew me. And then later on, uh, I became a professional musician and then I got to play for him. And uh, I had one super moment where about 40, 50, 60 musicians used to play together at that time, so I was one more musician. And there was a chai break generally about 11 o'clock. That day, everybody moved out of the studio, and I was just sitting with my guitar. And I was just, I had composed some piece, you know, I was still going on in my head. And there was no one in the studio. And as I kept playing that piece, suddenly the piano started playing the same piece, trying to figure out what the notes are. And I said, oh, somebody's behind the piano trying to figure my composition out. And then he got it, and then he stood up, and then I saw Spanchanga. He was sitting there and just looked at me and says, super. And wow, what a shot in my arm, you know, as a composer, when he, he tells you super. And what, I must have been 18, 19 at that time. And then years later, so then I played for him, and then years later, to be told that he had just passed away, and, and then he had apparently he wanted to do all his music for the next generation and he, want, he had told Asha ji that he wants to do it with me. Leslie ke saath kaam karke mujhe mera hi music ek nahi generation ke liye karna hai. And I was shocked. I said, if all the people in the world, why me? He could have chosen anybody. But he had just passed away and, and you know, Asha ji asked me, tum karoge kya? I said, well, where's the question of saying no? So that's how Rahul and I came out, and that was my tribute to, to Panchanda and, and Ashali, of course. And so all I can say is I've been one of the luckiest kids in town, and I'm still lucky because, like Shibani says, you know, when we perform, there's always some Adi Burman song somewhere there pushing the audience today, 2018. So it's still rocking. Thank you. Like Leslie, I'm sure most of us have not been fortunate of uh, having met uh, Panchamda or spending time with him. But I think I've been very lucky that because of my familial proximity with the Mangeshkar family and specifically Asha Bhosleji, I have uh, lived a lot of Panchamda through Asha Ji because every time I meet with her, and I meet with her very often, and we're dining or we're just traveling the country doing something, she gives me stories galore of what she has learned from Asha, from Panjamda. And I have seen that, I think one of us mentioned that, of course, he's musically a god and a musical genius and whatever else, but I myself being a student of management, I think Panjamda was a god of management as well. Because I'll just tell you one instance, and then there are stories galore which, can, which could be uh, shared later. But uh, when I was doing my first film called Page Three, I sent a song to Asha Ji, was in San Francisco in 2002 when internet was not all that, uh, you know, it wasn't the way it is today. And I wrote a mail to her saying, I would like you to sing it. I'm sending you the files. So she immediately called me from there and said, okay, I'm singing it, but it's going to be the first time when I, but there's going to be no composer, no lyricist, nobody around me, you know. So she sang it and she sent it back to me. And when she came back to India from San Francisco, she said, I didn't sing because I told her that if you don't shape up, you will ship out. Because she said when the first time musicians ke saath gana khatam hua tha aur wo headphone shuru hua tha aur male singer pehle ga raha hai female baag mein ga rahi to panchamda had told her that if you don't acclimatize yourself with the changing environment you will be out of business so she said that thing is stuck in my head so you know i mean this is just one of the things but there are millions of things that i have heard from the horse's mouth because who better than ashaji would actually say multiple stories and how true the person was to his job and to his craft that he would play a tune to her and then she would get excited and then he would tell her no it's not you it's lata ji who's going to sing it tomorrow morning 
So it just shows how true a person could be to one's craft. So I think there are a lot of managerial things that one needs to learn. Like uh, Shantanu said, ki someone in him must be selling that tune or this whole craft or that whole five minute of madness, which is very difficult for most of us. Which is why I think we all fail in some manner. But I think Dada uh, sort of you know really succeeded. So hats off. I never met Panchanda. I never even worked with him. But he introduced me to sex. Think of it, the year was 1991 and my parents had got tickets for a film called Karva and that was running at the Shalimar cinema. And I went there and it was this wonderful cinema with the fountain in the lobby and I think it was the first time from the sheltered enclave that Kaf Parade is, we went to Grand Road to see a movie and the movie was Karva and suddenly there was Helen and she was doing Piya Tu Ab Tu Aja and my eyes fell out. I didn't, I... And then suddenly two reels later there was Aruna Irani doing Charti Jawani Two reels later, Asha Parekh with a lampshade on her head said, Kaisi Phasi. And I went home wondering what had hit me. It was 91, I was a child. And I was in love with all these three ladies. It was only two weeks later when we went to the Liberty Cinema for the premiere of a film called Aagale Lagja where Sharmila Tagore in orange harem pants did Vada Karo Nahi Chhodogi and I said, she is copying Helen, yeah. <coughs> and then a week later there was Rampur Ka Lakshman and there was Padma Khanna doing and then I had to connect the dots and I said, it's all the same person doing the music and though I thought I was in love with Helen and Padma Khanna and Sharmila Tagore and Asha Parikh, actually I fell in love with R.D. Burman. And the moment I saw R.D. Burman on the poster, I used to go and see the film. All of them. I didn't like Gulzar so much, he didn't allow him to use the drums. <laughs> I didn't like I said, what is he doing here? Why aren't we doing things that we can do? But there were gems. I went to see, my father finally said, boss, you go and see movies. And we see one a month, this business of seeing one film every week, we can't do. So I went by myself and sat in the stalls at Roxy Cinema and I saw R.D. Burman's, the only film with Devanand and Sharmila Tagore. It was called Ye Gulista Hamara. And there was wonderful music and nobody's heard of the film. And I still listen to it even today. I'm lucky that I got that legacy. I'm lucky that, well, I'm very unlucky that I didn't work with Panchamda, but I think the musical legacy that I got in 1971, 72 <laughs> onwards kept me instead, whether it was Patra Ke Pool, whether it was Raju Bangya Gentleman, whether it was Dil Vil Pyar Vyar, which was a tribute to Arti Barman. Uh, whether it was even my English film, Everybody Says I'm Fine, where I went all the way to San Francisco and blackmailed Carlos Santana to play the lead guitar in the title song without charging me money for it. <laughs> I think I was truly blessed. And I think all of us are truly blessed. I think it is a pity that I can't remember any of the songs from any of the films this year or last year. But I can remember every song in every single R.D. Burman movie. And that's 5,000 plus songs. So you can imagine how amazing this man must have been. Thank you, R.D. Burman, and thank you, Brahmanand, for everything that you're doing. Uh, this is not our legacy. This is something that 50 years later our grandchildren will be hearing. And that is truly what makes a legacy in you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My introduction to Panchamda was as a listener, as a child. And the one thing that really struck me most, song after song after song, was 
the catch he had, I mean, he could make a melody groove and he could make the groove melodic. And he had a way of combining both of these uh, elements in a way and marry them with each other uh, in, in a, the most perfect way. So when you're listening to a song, if you listen minutely, there are many, many different things that are happening in the song. But if you sit and study that, it gets into com very complex forms and very complicated stuff. But as a piece of music, as a song, it just breezes through you. And the second thing that struck me was that when you hear a Panchanda song, you hear the environment. Every time, uh, this was like, a, like when I was a kid, 71, 72, 73, Every time I heard a song, there used to be Vivid Bharati back then, and uh, we used to hear the song, and I used to kind of imagine, oh, there must be this happening, there must be a hero and a heroine, and they must be dancing in the uh, mountains, or it must be very cold. You know, you have a certain visualization when you hear uh, a piece of music, and every time I would, like, if I happen to see the film, it was exactly the way I had almost, but exactly uh, very close to how uh, I had visualized it. So he had a way of bringing in the environment somehow, like, you know, work uh, the music around it in such a way that uh, it, it was not just a piece of song or just a piece of music. There was, there was a lot more going on there, uh, which made you... Uh, feel the song in in a way where it must be set. There was only one place where I think I made a, I, I kind of made a mistake there. There was one song which I loved and I thought the guy singing that must be uh, uh, somebody who's si sitting outside uh, a Darga and, and singing the song and the hero must be like on the road like heartbroken and like walking all over the place. But uh, many years later, when I actually uh, uh, saw the visuals of that particular song, uh, it just turned out to be, uh, um, excuse my memory, but uh, uh, yeah, there was this song, the, the, it, it turned out to be a song where a guy is singing on the stage and there's no heroine, but uh, there's Amitabh Bachchan in the movie and it's a uh, it is from a movie called Bena, and the song is called Yara O Yara. Yeah? So, yeah. So, uh, um, that was the only place where I, my visualization went a little awry, but that, that was the visualization, that, those were the visuals I had when I heard, first heard that song. So, uh, I mean, there, there are so many things. I mean, anything I say about Panchamda would really be uh, very small because there, there are many people who know much more about. Um, him and his music and Brahma, of course, uh, is saying it. One thing I must say uh, about Brahma is I think um, what he's done is phenomenal and uh, phenomenal for the reason that he is doing, like, like he was telling me some time back, he was doing something that maybe Panchanda's son would have done what he was doing. But I said I would add to it, what you're doing is not what, what Panchabda's son would have done, but because he wouldn't have been able, able to give the kind of objective perspective to Panchabda, the person, the human being, and the musician, that you, not being his son, are able to give. And another very beautiful uh, thing about uh, Brahma's documentaries is that there, there is no voiceover, there is nobody narrating anything. The entire story and the perspectives uh, is interwoven completely through what people who knew Panchamda and people who know his music, that's the thread of weaving is, is coming from the spoken words of the people he has uh, talked to. So uh, that gives a completely, it doesn't lead you on the way a voiceover would lead you on to believe something. You, it's, it's open for you to interpret what you want to. And I think um, I'll, I'll, I'll cut this now. Uh, there's just one thing I would, I would say. Uh, what the documentary um, 
the, and the series that he's uh, he's basically satiating our curiosity of Panchanda. We've heard his music. We want to know more about him, his personal life, his the person that he was, the human being that he was, his interactions with people, his relationships with people. How did his mind work? How did it function? Why was he the way he was? There is a certain curiosity, and that curiosity, Brahma is fulfilling. He's doing what we all would have loved to do, but couldn't. But he's he's taken those those extra steps um, uh, to do that. Ultimately, I think the one great realization we all have from uh, watching Pachanda's documentaries is that. Uh, we are all human, and we all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Not, not us. Not the people we live with. And sometimes we feel it is much easier to walk away uh, from a problem than stay put there and bear with it. And uh, we expect that out of other people, but it doesn't. Life doesn't work that way. So there is something a lot more personal, um, you know, at a very personal level, there's something you can take away from, from the life of uh, Panchanda. That's the way, as, as Brahma says, that's the way life is. There is there is no other way it will be. You have to just take it as it comes. And there's, there, are, there are many, many lessons to be learned um, from all of this. So, Brahma, thank you very much for, for this. And I'm looking forward to this web series that you're coming up with. Thank you. Hello. Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, good evening, everyone here. Uh, it's my honor and privilege to be sharing the stage with such distinguished uh, music directors, composers, and Vivek Vaswani, who's a friend. First of all, I would like to compliment Brahmanand Singh for having taken the initiative ten years ago and uh, made such a beautiful documentary, uh, highlighting and uh, you know exploring R.D. Padman as a human being, as a musician and uh, you know unraveling his uh, genius with the help of quotes from everyone and he had taken my uh, inputs in the documentary as well uh, i had i consider myself blessed because i had the opportunity to be with panchamda for 10 years right from 1983 when he won his first filmfare award for sanam teri kasam and he was not talking, uh, he was not speaking to the media for reasons known to him. I somehow managed to uh, meet him for an interview and I was, I am, I was, I am, I am and I will always be his diehard fan. Uh, when I went to interview him, uh, unlike most other people who hanker for publicity, Panchamda told me, Tum to mere fan ho, tum kya mere interview loge? So, he said, you become a hardcore critic, then I will give you an interview. Again, second time I went, he said, Aaj bhi aap tumare, tum, humare fan ho, I don't think you'll be able to take my interview. Ultimately, the third time when I went to take the interview, he told me, Aaj thoda sa fark mujhe ho hai. maybe today I think you have come as a critic. And the third time when I went, I took his interview, I took his permission to ask him thoda ulta sida questions. He said, no problem, go ahead and ask. Uh, Panchamda, like we carry cell phones today, would carry, always carry a pack of 555 five, five cigarettes. So, he had an amazing zany sense of humor. Dada, why are you 555? If everyone calls me Pancham, then it's 555. So, he would always carry that. If you see in all his pictures, either he will put it in the harmonium or in the hand. So I told him, Dada, I am allergic to smoke. When he gave me his interview, I have that picture uh, with me. When he gave me his uh, interview uh, at Film Center uh, at Tardew. So Panchamda uh, sat, you know, his favorite was sitting with both his uh, legs up on the sofa. He told me, I'll hold a cigarette in my hand because my habit is. He didn't light the cigarette. He put a cigarette in his hand and interview kiya. And you know, Basically, he was a rebel. मतलब उसका वो दम मारो दम का एक लाइन है दुनिया ने हम सब की परवाह करें क्यों? He dared to defy convention. He was basically a rebel. तो उसको you know the best part is whenever I used to go for recordings at film center, he used to always sit below no smoking and smoke. ये ये उनकी खासियत थी. You know वहाँ पर लिखा गया था no smoking lungs at work. 
तो पंचम से अरे उनको पता नहीं है हमारा जीनियस एट वर्क है तो लंग्स की बात कर रहे बोलो यू नो एंड आई गिव स्मॉल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ इज ही वॉज एक्सलेंट एट पंच लाइंस यू नो पंचम नाम था उनका पंच सो पंच लाइंस के लिए उनका बहुत ये था आई रिमेंबर ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट 93 में अबाउट 15 डेज बिफोर ही पास्ट अवे ही ड्रॉप मी इन हिज कार इन दोज डेज आई डेंट हैव अ कार सो यू नो ही इज टू मेरे साथ मजाक करते थे वो एंड हीज फेवरेट वॉज गिविंग गालीज यू नो मतलब ऑल काइंड ऑफ तो हीज टू से वेन आई केयर फॉर यू वेन यू आर माई पर्सन आई विल गिव यू गालीज तो इफ आई वुड नेवर गो फॉर अ रिकॉर्डिंग और आई आई वुड नॉट मीट हिम ऑन अ स्पेसिफिक डेज यू नो उसका कैसा था ही वुड गिव मी गालीज सपोज सम एक्ट्रेस और सम हीरोइन सम सिंगर इज सिटिंग देर ही वुड गिव मी गालीज वट एवर यू नो आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड अब बोलता था बाद में डबिंग करूंगा ही वुड डू लिप मूवमेंट मुझे गाली देता था एंड बोले बोल देन ही वुड से बाद में डबिंग करूंगा अच्छा अच्छा देन आई आस्ट इम हिज कार नंबर पंचम दास कार नंबर वॉज बी एम सी वन वन थ्री नाइन वो जमाने में एटीज में बी एम सी वुड मीन बॉम्बे म्यूनिसपल कॉरपोरेशन तो ऐसे दादा ये क्या आपको खास नंबर रजिस्ट्रेशन दिया है बॉम्बे म्यूनिसपल कॉरपोरेशन भागा लेके तू अगे नहीं गेमी गाली इन माई केज इट मीन्स बेस्ट म्यूजिक कंपोजर एंड सी द प्रोफेसी केम ट्रू दिस वॉज इन डिसम्बर नाइनटीन नाइनटी थ्री 94 में इन ड्यूरिंग द ईयर लव स्टोरी 1942 रिलीज्ड एंड ही गॉट द बेस्ट म्यूजिक अवार्ड कंपोजर अवार्ड यू नो इन फिल्म फेयर एंड व्हाट एवर एंड देन देयर वाज अ अवार्ड नेम्ड आफ्टर हिम सो दादा पंचम दा का ये था कि ही वाज वेरी यू नो मतलब क्या कहते हैं ही वाज नॉट कंसर्नड अबाउट गेटिंग पब्लिसिटी बीइंग रिटन अबाउट यार मेरा म्यूजिक लोग फैंस सुन रहे ही ही वुड ऑलवेज टेल मी माय फैंस आर माय बिगेस्ट रिवॉर्ड्स not awards fans are is what matters to me then i used to ask him ki dada you know ek sensitive question aap se puchna hai bhai you don't have children what what is what what is the future about your music you know he told me very casually i am married to music i am married to music mere jitne bhi chart buster gaane hai they are my children they will carry my legacy forward and now brahmanan singh is carrying the legacy forward acha before i close i just want to say one thing throughout his career panchamda da never got a national award you know he 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 was he in his own language he would say hamesha jury mujhe bypass karti hai because he had undergone a bypass operation jury mujhe bypass karti hai so it is a divine blessing from pancham da i remember telling brahma when he called me to tell me the good news he chaitanya i have got uh, two national awards from my documentary i told him brahma all i can say is pancham da has blessed you from above you know like you are carrying his legacy forward jo unke pure career mein unko he couldn't uh, get the uh, national award aaj aapko you know double bonanza do uh, national award mein hai so i think uh, brahma has done a fabulous job of carrying the legacy forward and i wish him all the very best for his uh, web series uh, legacy of pancham and uh, you know uh, in uh, 2039 it will be the centenary year of pancham da and <coughs> brahmanans whatever tributes that he has done or whatever till today you know pancham da was very fond of echoes he would tell me that hamesha aapka kaam resonate hote rehna chahiye if you see 80% of his songs tarat 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 everywhere you have echoes of instrumental ya vocal so brahmanand has done the resonating part you know whatever work that he has done it will keep on echoing for centuries on end all the best from him hello yes thank you very much i think uh, uh, let's see the promo and sonu would you want to say a few things before that or maybe after you see the thing after you see the the, the thing okay so let's see so this has uh, i think we can over here yeah, yes uh, so it's something which is uh, very simple it it's uh, it's driven from the everyday conversations that we have and uh, what you'll see here is something that 
uh, we all do every day, but I'm trying to put them together. Thank you. experience benefit from whatever I have no idea really but I am doing what I feel I would love to do and I think somebody had asked me about the first film Pancham Unmixed that uh, uh, so what was it what prepared you to do that and things like that and I said that had you met Pancham and I said that never met Pancham and uh, I think but that curiosity and that compulsion was so high that probably I spent three years, three and a half years to make that film and, and it was a very expensive way of buying a ticket for a film that I wanted to see. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, that's what I have to share on this day here and uh, thank you very much for being here and I'd like uh, Sonu to say a few things if you want, please. Hi everyone, I, uh, first of all, uh, big hi to all, of, all the people, my, my seniors, my colleagues, everyone, of course. Uh, not, I am not too uh, quite clued into how much of uh, effort uh, Ramanan has made uh, in this, but I have heard so much about your documentaries, I haven't seen them, and uh, people from my fraternity, fraternity always talk about it ki matlab jaise intehai koi bahut hi man se banaye hui koi cheez hai aur is shahkar ko maine dekha nahi abhi tak i'm really sorry for that par isliye maine kuch kaha nahi pehle kyunki jab kuch pata hi na bless you pata hi na ho to fir insaan uske bare mein zyada bolta ho theek nahi rehta lagta par jab tak ke bare mein main abhi jitna nahi kahunga sabne keh diye itni chichi baatein i just i'm lucky that i met him i was about to get a chance to sing for him और पर किस्मत की बात होती है मेरी किस्मत में नहीं था उनके साथ में काम कर पाना क्योंकि मैं समय दिल्ली में चला गया था कुछ तीन चार महीने के लिए पैसे कमाने के लिए पैसे खत्म हो गए यहाँ पे एंड देन आई केम बैक तो संपत जी याद है मधुधनी स्टूडियो के संपत जी मधुधनी रोते सो ही ही कॉल मी अपन सर ये तेरी किस्मत खराब है तेरे को पंचम दाँत ढूंढ रहे थे ढूंढ रहे थे फिर मुझे मालूम पड़ा कि नाइनटीन फोर्टी टू लॉस स्टोरी के लिए ढूंढ रहे थे और मैंने वो रिकॉर्डिंग मेरे आंखों के सामने होती हुई देखी है पंचम दाँ ने कुमार चांद जी को एक दिन पहले वापस भेज दिया था क्योंकि वो दाढ़ी बड़ी बनी थी उसकी वजह से तो हम बड़ी उम्मीद में थे कि शायद आए ना आपको कुमार चंदू जी बिल्कुल तो आ गए मेरे सामने गाना उन्होंने याद किया वहीं पर मैंने पहली बार जावेद अख्तर जी को देखा और मुझे याद है कि मेरे सामने उन गाना सिखा रहे थे एक लड़की को देखा तो ऐसा लगा कभी डिटेल में बात बताऊँगा एनी वे दिस इज इट्स इज ग्रेट आई ऑलवेज फील देर इज अ वेरी नाइस वर्ड इन फिलोसफी कॉल्ड टेलीलॉजी टेलीलॉजी मीन्स हर चीज़ का हर इंसान का अल्टीमेट पर्पस आपकी टेलीलॉजी ये थी तो इसलिए दिस वॉज योर टेलीलॉजी ऑल द बेस्ट इन की बराबर थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड आई थिंक इट्स वंडरफुल टू हियर दैट टर्म and term appropriated here thank you very much i think uh, anyone wanting anyone who might have a few minutes if you want one on one please feel free uh ha baat चलो पीछे चलो रे पूरा पीछे चलो अच्छा फोटो मिले हाँ सर जी आप सर आलो भी सर जी लास्ट चलो मैं पूछता हूँ मैं पूछता हूँ सवाल मैं पूछता हूँ
रमानंद जी ने इतनी अच्छी अच्छी डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज बनाई हैं पंचमदा पे और जगजीत सिंह जी पे आप वेब सीरीज जो कर रहे हैं इसके बारे में मुझे भी बताइए मुझे भी बता दें करेक्ट सो वेब सीरीज़ का आइडिया ये है कि इतनी सारी चीज़ें पंचमदा के बारे में निकल निकल के सामने आते रहती है जब हम उन, उनके गानों को बार बार सुनते हैं देखते हैं दस लोगों से बातें होती है कि एक एक प्लेटफॉर्म कुछ मुझे लगा कि ऐसा होना चाहिए जहाँ पे आप जाओ और पंचमदा के बारे में आप बरसों आप बस घुसते रह सकते हो उनके म्यूज़िक के अंदर तो में आप लोगों से बातचीत करेंगे मतलब कैसे मैं लोगों से बातचीत करूँगा और कुछ नए ड्रामेटिक मोमेंट्स भी मैं निकालूँगा जैसे अब उनके जो डॉक्टर थे लंडन बेस्ड उस समय में हार्ट हार्ट का जो किया था तो उन्होंने उन उनको जा कर के एक अपने सी दिए वो कैसेट से सी वाला पीरियड था अच्छा सो ही जस्ट सो ही केम बैक नेक्स्ट डे गिव हिम द सी डीज एंड सेट की पंचमदा सॉरी मैं ओल्ड स्कूल अभी भी हूँ मैं कैसेट से ग्रेजुएट नहीं किया हूँ अगर कुछ कैसेट्स हो तो दे देना आप तो नहीं बोला अच्छा अच्छा ठीक है कोई बात नहीं अगले दिन ही वेंट टू इज प्लेस फॉर अ ड्रिंक एंड ही वेंट विथ अ कैसेट प्लेयर ओ विथ अ सी डी प्लेयर दो सी डीज ए गेम बैक सो दीज आर मोमेंट्स विच विच गिव यू यू नो एन इन साइट इन इन टू द पर्सन दैट ही वॉज नॉट a person who would go go and give him a cassette you know for his series so that's and uh, i think you i and many other people you know we are just perpetrators of his legacy you know what the one who is the best no no sonu ji ek na ha hi boli sunka ek mera aapko ek vishesh baat unki मैं मैं आ, मैं लकी भी हूँ कि मैं उसे मिल पाया था और लकी भी हूँ कि मेरे हाथ से आता हुआ काम चला गया मुझे मौका मिलने वाला था क्योंकि मैं उस समय दिल्ली चला गया था और तीन महीने के लिए मैं रहा वहाँ पे तो उस समय संपत जी मधुधोनी के रिकॉर्डिंग से थे उन्होंने मेरा गाना सुनाया था तो उनका अरे पंचम दादा को तेरे गाना याद हो गया तो जब मैं उनसे फर्स्ट टाइम मिला तो उन्होंने बोला अरे वही है क्या बोला हो गया मेरे गाने आगे बता रहे मुझे तो मैं इतना लकी हूँ कि उनको मेरा गाना याद था बट जब वो मुझे ढूंढ रहे थे तो मैं उनको नहीं मिल पाया तो वो एक बात पर कोई बात नहीं सबकी हर चीज़ में हम प्लस पॉइंट्स देखते हैं द म्यूज़िक स्टेज द लेगेसी स्टेज द कैरेक्टर स्टेज इनके सारे उनके साथ में काम करने वाले बहुत सारे लोग मेरे आज बहुत नज़दीकी दोस्त हैं राजू सिंह उनमें से सबसे ऊपर है और वो मुझे उनके बारे में बातें बताते रहते हैं सो आई एम कनेक्टेड टू हिम नेवर लेस और अगर होगी तो क्या वो लिखनी होगी माना की समय की डिमांड है तो आप अगर बता सकते पहले की खास बात ये थी जो मैं और भी शांतु मोहतरे भी बात कर रहे थे की उस समय सिटिंग में एक्टर्स या बाकी लोग जाते थे उंगली करने के लिए नहीं समझे एडवाइस देने के लिए नहीं संगीत सिखाने के लिए नहीं जाते थे संगीत सीखने के लिए उस माहौल का मज़ा लेने के लिए अपने इनपुट्स देने के लिए जाते थे अभी हर किसी को म्यूज़िक में से है म्यूज़िक आता हो या नहीं आता हो आई थिंक दैट्स गुड यू नो बट आई थिंक यू नो दिस इज नॉट फाइन अभी ऐसा मामला है इसलिए आप कभी भी उस जमाने में अगर आर डी बर्मन के आप जगह पर जाएंगे तो वहाँ पर उनके बराबरी के लोग उनके बराबरी की बातें करेंगे उनके जो लोग अज्ञानी हैं वो बैठकर ज्ञान नहीं देंगे वहाँ पे इसलिए ये फर्क है बहुत बड़ी अरे नहीं मैं तो बहुत दिखता हूँ जिनको दिखना चाहिए उनको दिखता हूँ मैं हाँ वो मैं मैं इतना मिस करता हूँ इसलिए लेकिन हर बार ऐसा नहीं हो पाता पॉसिबल होता एनी आज आज हम बात कुछ और करते हैं अगर आप कुछ बता सकते हैं मेरी कुछ नहीं मैं शॉर्ट फिल्म में बताओ
आई वुड से कि इंसाइटफुल चीज़ मुझसे ज़्यादा तो भाई ब्रह्मानंद जी ने बताई है कि उन्होंने एक ऐसी डॉक्यूमेंट्री बना भी दी और वेब सीरीज भी बनाने जा रहे हैं जिस जिसमें हमें पता चलेगा पंचम दाद द जीनियस द लेजेंड द म्यूजिशन द मिस्ट्री इन इस मिस्ट्री के पीछे कौन थे क्या क्या ट्रिविया था क्या क्या ऐसे वाक्य हुए वी रॉल डाइन टू नो दैट आंट वी आई मीन इमेजिन आई डोंट थिंक दैस बीन अ लेजेंड लाइक दैट एवर फ्रॉम दिस कंट्री जिन्होंने अपनी म्यूज़िक को इतना ग्लोबल बनाया मतलब आई फोन एट का जो एड है उसमें उनका म्यूज़िक है कि इमेजिन द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ इज म्यूज़िक जो आज तक मतलब लोगों को दीवाना बनाए हुए हैं इट्स हिज म्यूज़िक इज़ ट्रूली एवर लास्टिंग और ये जब भी मैं अपने शोज भी करती हूँ तो जब पंचम दा का सेट करती हूँ तब सबसे ज़्यादा बढ़िया रिस्पॉन्स और मैड रिस्पॉन्स मिलता है लोग बिल्कुल दीवाने हो जाते हैं गाने लगते हैं डांस करने लगते हैं मतलब बहुत मज़ा आता है Which has been your favorite songs? Oh, too many favorite songs. There are over five thousand songs to to choose from. They all of them. Each. हरे गाने का ना एक अपना अपनी कहानी है, एक अपना mood है. हरे गाने का अपना character है. So every song is a favorite. I have to say. हरे गाने में और stereotypical भी नहीं है कि भई आ monotonous है. You know that every song tells a different story, different feel. किस music director या singer का ऐसा और वर्जन देखना चाहेंगे अपार्ट फ्रॉम वेल आजकल के म्यूजिक डायरेक्टर्स भी बहुत आई मीन देर अमेजिंग बट कैन आई बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट जहाँ मुझे एक बहुत अलग छाप दिखी है वो ए आर रहमान साहब में दिखी है उन्होंने बहुत म्यूज़िक को हमारे बॉलीवुड म्यूज़िक को ग्लोबल किया है सो विद हिज मेलेडीज विच आर वेरी ट्रू सोलफुल मेलेडीज इट्स ऑल अबाउट द मेलेडी एक्चुअली सो आई थिंक जो सोलफुल मेलेडी उन्होंने इस जो हासिल की है अब तक आई थिंक इट्स इट्स फैंटेस्टिक इट्स नॉट अबाउट हैविंग द हिट्स ऑल द टाइम इट्स अबाउट वो गाना कितने कब तक चलेगा एवर लास्टिंग होगा फिर इट हैज़ टू हैव अ शेल्फ लाइफ इट्स लेगेसी लेगेसी दैट्स राइट वर्ड सो